What if I told you that the exact same UI we built for ESP32 can run seamlessly on HTM32 without rewriting everything from scratch? That's the power of LVGL. In today's video, we will take our OLED UI project, drop it into HTM32 Cube IDE and watch it run on real HTM32 hardware. This isn't just theory. You will see step by step how to bring LVGL alive on a different platform. And by the end, you will understand how portable and powerful your UI code really is. If you are curious how we reached at this point, make sure to check out the earlier videos in this series where we explored LVGL basics, code structure, and even ESP32 hands on demo. Namaste and welcome back to Avinashi Tech. Here, we decode the world of embedded systems, breaking down protocols, reading data sheets, exploring open source libraries, and putting it all together into simple DIY projects. If embedded tech excites you, consider joining us on this journey. All right, let's open up HTM32 Cube IDE and pick up from where we left off with our HTM32 F411 project. This setup is under Git and inside our HTM32 project, you will see few key folders. First, the core folder, which holds our HTM32 main source file along with OLED related source files. Basically, the HTM32 application. Then there is the OLED common folder, which contains platform independent code. This is the really neat part. You can drop this SSD1306 library file into any controller project with minimal changes. Up to now, our progress has been the universal adaptation of the SSD1306 library with SPI implementation and a working draw pixel function running on HTM32. If you haven't watched the earlier videos in this series, I would recommend checking them out first because today's work builds directly on that SSD1306 foundation. Now, let's bring in the LVGL and SquareLine Studio related common files we discussed earlier. First, I will copy the LVGL 8.4.0 folder into the drivers folder of my STM32 project. Back in Cube IDE, a quick refresh shows our new LVGL files in place. To keep things organized, I will create a new subfolder named LVGL inside drivers and move the entire LVGL 8.4.0 code base there. This structure will help us later when we add our lvconf.h configuration file. Speaking of which, let's copy lvconf.h from our common files into this new LVGL folder. If you watched the ESP32 video, you will remember we didn't need this file there because ESP IDF handled configs via SDK config. But here on STM32, we do need lvconf.h. With the files in place, let's switch back to cube IDE under project properties, C, C++ general, paths and symbols. I will add our new LVGL path so the compiler knows where to look. Once that's set, we rebuild the index and our STM32 project is now LVGL ready. Next. Let's go ahead and copy all our image CRA files, then navigate to core, src, and paste them there. Refresh the project once again, so cube IDE picks them up. Now, let me open up our main application source file. Here, we will add the necessary macros, variables, and function declarations. Since we are moving forward with LVGL as our graphics layer, I will clean things up by removing the old draw pixel test code from our last checkpoint. Scrolling down, you will notice we already have our function definitions for GUI task, callback functions, and LV tick task. Now, the obvious question here is how do we call LV tick task periodically? One quick option is to use the Sysdick ISR. But, but, but. A giant butt! Huh? Since we are going to use a free RTOS task, and free RTOS itself relies on Sysdick for internal scheduling, 
we can't really hijack it. So here's what we will do. Open the .ioc file, head into system core, then sys and change the time based source to tim1 or timer1. This frees up sysdict for free RTOS and allocates timer1 for HAL tick and LVGL tick. Next, in the middleware section, enable free RTOS and select Kimsys v1. We will keep the free RTOS settings pretty minimal for now, unlike trade tariffs by the USA, which are anything but simple. In the tasks and queues tab, you will see a default task already exists. Let's edit that, rename it, adjust the stack size, and set the entry function to GUI task. Hit OK, then save and generate code. You will see cube IDE adds the Kimsys OS.h header and a task handle at the top. The main application now creates our thread and starts the scheduler. Perfect. Scrolling down, you will also notice cube IDE generated a new empty GUI task function. Since we already have our own GUI task ready with real code, I will remove the auto generated one to avoid any confusion. Now, for the timer one callback, we will insert a call to LV tick inc in addition to the HAL tick inc. That's the piece that keeps LVGL's internal clock ticking. And that's it for this setup. Let's build the code either by clicking the hammer icon or the shortcut control plus B. Once the build is complete, I will connect my ST-Link V2 debugger to the stm 32 f 411 black pill board and then hit the run button. Uploading starts. And once complete, I will disconnect the programmer and hook up our SST1306 OLED display. And here it is. First, the text Avinashi Tech, then the images in sequence, Mustache Man, a 10 seconds delay, Hat Woman, again delay, Skyscraper, delay, Tiger, delay, and finally the rows. At the very end, one last text label to be continued. After finishing this build, let's quickly head over to git bash. Running a git status shows us the newly added and modified files. Let's go ahead and add and commit them so everything is tracked properly. That wraps up the text and images part of our journey. Now let's move on to the UI part. Inside the drivers folder, I will create a new folder named UI. Then from our common files sitting peacefully where we left them, I will copy the Squareline Studio generated content and paste it right into this newly created UI folder. Refresh the project as usual, so Cube IDE picks it up. With the files in place, the next step is to add the UI folder path in project properties, CC++ general, paths and symbols, hit apply and close. Back in our GUI task, I will remove the text and image display code we wrote earlier. Instead, I will paste in the UI initialization code and in the infinite loop, we will keep our UI labels updating. Alongside that, I will add the update clock function and don't forget to include the UI.h header file plus the required variables. Once everything is set, let's hit Ctrl plus B to build the code and we wait. Build is complete. Now connect a stealing programmer again and upload the code to our HTM32 chip. Once the uploading is done, disconnect the programmer and reconnect our SST1306 OLED display to the board. On the OLED, we now see day and date at the top, followed by hour, minute and second updating continuously from the reset default time of 7.30. And that's it. From Squareline Studio all the way to our OLED display. The journey of building a simple yet functional UI is now complete. Finally, let's open git bash and commit these changes. I will mark this one as UI implementation using LVGL. Don't worry, all of these files will be shared and the link to them will be available soon. And hey, if you find these videos helpful 
and want to support future such contents, you can also check out our Buy Me A Coffee page. It's a simple way to help me keep experimenting, building and sharing more videos with you. With this, we will wrap up today's video. We took our LVGL and square line based code and brought it to life on the HTM32. Displayed text, images and finally built a simple but promising UI on our SHT1306 monochrome OLED display. With this video, we mark an end to this display series, at least for now. From datasheet, deep dives to creating a universal SHT1306 library and finally building a universal UI platform with LVGL, it's been quite a journey. I hope you enjoyed this series. If yes, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. This is Avinashi Tech signing off. Keep building, keep experimenting and most importantly, keep making those UIs for your display.